Now, if your legumes are looking like this, where you have no nodules, it means your legumes aren't fixing any nitrogen, which, what's the whole point of putting a legume in if they're not gonna make free nitrogen fertilizer? So I thought I'd put together this video to explain everything you need to know about nitrogen fixation in legumes and the minerals and soil uh, components needed to maximize uh, nitrogen fixation. So the very first thing I guess we need to talk about is what's the actual process? Why, why does this happen? And so we have the legume root, it puts in a root in, it finds these bacteria uh, called uh, rhizobia bacteria. Now, these bacteria are quite special because they can uh, fix nitrogen out of the atmosphere. So it takes nitrogen out of the atmosphere and the atmosphere has about 78% nitrogen uh, gas. So there's heaps of nitrogen uh, in the atmosphere. So I think it works out to be 74,000 tons of straight nitrogen above each hectare of land. So that's a lot of nitrogen. Um, and you wonder why we're deficient in nitrogen. And so we're able to actually tap into that nitrogen with this process. So the legume puts the root down and it finds a rhizobium bacteria and it curls, the root curls around that bacteria like this uh, and starts the formation of a uh, nodule. And so then the rhizobia bacteria will then uh, repopulate, increasing in numbers and fills that nodule up with other rhizobia bacteria. And that's when we get our uh, nice nodule. Now from here, the uh, rhizobia bacteria takes in nitrogen, the plant, uh, nitrogen gas, the plant actually feeds the rhizobia uh, with carbohydrates and food so that it can pr uh, perform this function. I think it takes around 16 or so ATP for uh, this process to occur. So it's quite a energy intensive process, but you get free nitrogen out of it. So the rhizobia bacteria will convert nitrogen gas into ammonia. So not ammonium, but ammonia, where the plant can then convert that into amino acids uh, for use. So this is great. And as farmers, we don't want to spend so much, like we don't want to spend a heap of uh, money on fertilizers. We can actually use this system to produce hot, really high amounts of uh, nitrogen for our crops, getting up into uh, 200, 300 kilos of straight nitrogen per hectare. But we actually have to make sure that these guys are doing their jobs. And that's what this video is about. So before we get into the uh, nutritional requirements and the soil requirements, we'll talk about different stages of uh, or the, uh, the scores we can give our legumes. So what you need to do when you go out into your paddock, get a shovel, dig up your legumes. Um, so we don't want to disturb the nodules because they can fall off. Dig them up, wash the soil off in a bucket of water because that's more gentle than ripping the soil off. Um, and then you can effectively see the nodulation. And so there's three things we're looking at. We're looking at distribution of the uh, nodules, we're looking at the color of the nodules, we're also looking at uh, the size of the nodules. And so if you have no nodules at all, it means, uh, it could mean a few things. The most likely is that the rhizobia bacteria are simply not in your soil. So if you haven't had legumes in your rotation for a while, or if you haven't inoculated your legumes with the rhizobia specific for that particular legume, then there's a good chance you're not gonna have any rhizobia in your soil, and so it's not going to nodulate. So that's one reason. The other reason is that there's too much nitrogen in your soil. So if there's a whole bunch of nitrogen in your soil, then the plant thinks to itself, why am I going to use all this energy to supply these bacteria? Uh, in order for them to fix nitrogen if I can just simply take the nitrogen from the soil. So if your soil has too much nitrogen, that's going to inhibit this whole process. A really simple way we can get around that is by putting in uh, other species either before the legume crop or during the legume crop uh, to soak up excess nitrates or in, in ammonium and other nitrogen. So a really effective crop to put in with this uh, uh, grasses as well as some of the radishes, so a smart radish or a tillage radish, that puts in a really nice deep root and it's a bit of a scavenger plant. It takes in all, uh, a lot of available nitrogen, meaning around the legume, there's not gonna be much nitrogen. It's in a prime condition to nodulate. So that's the first or the lowest score. If you see that, it's a big problem. Uh, you don't want that. So the next uh, scoring is that there's nodules, but when you cut them open, they're green. So that means that the leg hemoglobin, which is a protein in the nodules, similar to hemoglobin that we have in our own blood, that transports oxygen uh, effectively out of the nodule. So the nodule needs to have no oxygen or very limited amounts of oxygen 
in the nodule, otherwise it inhibits this process by inhibiting the nitrogenase enzyme. We'll touch on that in a moment. So when the nodule is either white, green, or brown, it means that the uh, leg hemoglobins aren't there. So that could be because there's wrong rhizobia bacteria for that specific legume species. It could also mean that you don't have any iron in your soil or the plant doesn't have any iron available to itself. It could also be a nutritional problem um, as well. So overall, it means that it started to nodulate, but the plant's not actively, uh, or the, the rhizobia bacteria aren't actively fixing nitrogen. So it's pretty much useless. It's, it's not really uh, working. Next is we have a good distribution of uh, red nodules, which means that's fixing nitrogen. They're small and they're only on more or less the top parts of the roots. So if this is the case, it means you have the right rhizobia bacteria. You're getting uh, more or less the right nutri nutrition to it. So it's uh, fixing nitrogen, but it's not. it has a very poor distribution uh, down the root system. And we'll touch on this in a moment, but it has to do with poor soil structure and poor gas exchange into your subsoil or wherever that boundary is that stops uh, the nodulation. Now, some species of legumes uh, have different distributions of legumes throughout their roots, but overall, it should be pretty well uh, throughout the uh, plant root if you have good structure. So if you're seeing a distribution like this, it means that there's not enough gas exchange, so not enough nitrogen gas getting into the lower part of uh, the root system. So next we have a good distribution of small uh, nodules throughout the, the root system. This is pretty good. And then finally, and the most or the best, is that we have very large nodules, so more than half a centimeter in diameter uh, throughout the root system. So this is where we want to get to. We want to have lots of uh, just nodules all over it with some really large ones. Now, if you want a more in-depth scoring system, you can uh, check out this graph. It's from a MLA um, article. I'll link it uh, into the blog post attached to this video on our website, but it has um, some scoring recommendations for that and, and how to sample and, and all that. Right, so now that we know where our legumes sit on this chart, I'll start going through some of the, the, the first factors that I, I look at when working with clients with their nitrogen fixation. So the very first one, so you can see our diagram here, we have our legume, there's no nodules. So say we're gonna, we get to the farm, we pull up a legume and there's no nodules. So again, if we're seeing no nodules, the first thing that I'll be thinking about is uh, either there's no rhizobia in there or they're unable to nodulate. So this could be due to excess uh, nitrogen in our soil, uh, which, in, uh, which is gonna inhibit the nodulation while the plant even bother if it has all the nitrogen it needs. Likewise, it could also be due to the fact that they didn't inoculate the plant with uh, rhizobia. It could also be a pH problem. Nodulation and legumes prefer a pH between five on, on more or less the extreme end up to about seven. So you have to get your soil in that zone in order for you to fix uh, nitrogen or, or nodulate. If it's below five, make sure to apply lime uh, and lime your soils to increase that pH. So I write all these up. So the first one is excess nitrogen. We don't want that. So we wanna make sure we avoid excess nitrogen. We can do that again with uh, crops beforehand, uh, companion crops with our crop. We can also do that uh, with a soil primer rich in uh, materials needed for the soil microbes to rap rapidly convert that nitrogen into um, microbial biomass. And so we can do that with applying things like fulvic and humic acid, sulfur if it's sulfur deficient, uh, molybdenum as well. So what you can do now is that if you go onto our website, we actually have a free soil test analyzer. You can put all your soil test data into that and it'll tell you what you need to apply to um, more or less balance out your soil. If you have too much nitrogen, you're not going to get good nodulation. So that's the first one. So the next one is we want to have a pH between uh, five, 0.5 and 7. So making sure it's within that range is going to allow our plants to nodulate. And finally, uh, we want good structure. So structure is very important, not for not just for nodulation, but for uh, water infiltration uh, or gas exchange uh, and allowing for a really big root system. So when we have good gas exchange, the nitrogen gas, so nitrogen gas here is able to flow into our soil and be taken up by the nodules. 
So let's just say this plant, because we have uh, not excess nitrogen, it's in a good pH range. Uh, and the other thing is uh, we have rhizobia present. And because of that, we now have some good nodules on the plant. It can take in that nitrogen gas and convert it into ammonia, but that's only limited to the depth of which the nitrogen can get to. So say here you have a bit of a compaction zone, depending on your system and what you want to achieve, we could, and, and how bad that compaction zone is, we could come in, deep rip it up, get rid of it for sure. We could also use a cover crop with uh, tillage radishes and whatnot to really break up that compaction zone, allowing the plant to then further develop into the subsoil, extend its root zones out, um, and all that good stuff. Now, next, uh, in terms of good soil structure, I would also be looking at your soil organic carbon. So let's put that over here. Soil organic carbon levels. We've got a whole series on soil organic carbon. Go check it out. Uh, I would consider uh, potentially very strategic tillage, so a deep tillage pass. If there is a compaction zone, I wouldn't bother if there's not a compaction zone. You could deep rip, put a cover crop in with tillage radishes. It'll all achieve the same thing. And then finally, after all of that, I would then look at the cow mag ratio. Uh, I think it is okay, but limited. Uh, doesn't explain everything, but it's, it's good enough. So definitely consider adding more calcium. Good chance it's probably gonna be a low cow mag ratio, which means too much magnesium. Uh, I would consider adding lime, not only to raise the pH, but increase your cow mag ratio and supply calcium to the crop, uh, which the calcium is needed for uh, the early nodulation. So it's calcium is very important for uh, communication within the plant. And it's required for the plant to wrap the root around the rhizobium and start the nodulation process. So these, these things here, I guess we can consider our soil health component. And it's very important we have these right before we even consider putting a legume crop in and expecting it to uh, perform well. So now that we have all these uh, in place, actually, well, I mean, this shouldn't be excess, but no excess. So once we have that in place, we wanna make sure the crop has good nutrition because there's a few really critical uh, nutrients required for nitrogen fixation. Now, the very first ones uh, that we should talk about was actually needed in the nitrogenase enzyme. So there's two minerals, and if you look at the actual structure of the enzyme, which you can see here, there's two minerals really important. The first one is iron, and the other one is lignanum. Both of these are required, the enzyme cofactors for the enzyme. Um, you can't make the enzyme without these two things. So both of these have to be in the soil or supplied to the plant for it to actually produce the nitrogenase enzyme. Now again, make sure to check out your soil test to make sure you have sufficient amounts of these. Typically iron is uh, in abundance in our soil. The problem is most of the time it's in uh, iron three, which is the oxidized version. We want it in iron two, the reduced version. We can do that with better farming practices to uh, increase the aggregation of our soil, increasing the availability of iron. Malignan can be challenging, uh, deficient in a lot of soils. Uh, it's good to check uh, the totals of our soil tests. We can do uh, total soil testing. So if you want one done and analyze with nutritional recommendations for you, we can do that. But anyways, understanding whether or not you actually have molybdenum in your soil because of your soil, soil parent material uh, and how old it is, will tell us whether or not we need to apply it. If you don't have it, you simply have to apply it. There's no amount of biology that you can add that will bring back molybdenum if you just simply don't have it in your soil. So we've got to check these ones. Uh, the next one we need to make sure we have sufficient amounts of is uh, phosphorus. Phosphorus is required for ATP production. Now, if we go back to this chart here or the diagram of the nitrogenase, you can see that a fair amount of ATP is required in this process. ATP requires three amounts of phosphorus. So lots of phosphorus is required. Phosphorus is also required for root development. Um, and it has a whole other functions for uh, nodulation. It governs uh, distribution and size. So very important as well. Now, before we go on, the next thing I want to mention is the role of iron in leg hemoglobin. So again, here's a diagram of it. Um, iron is required uh, in that structure to make sure that the uh, legumes or the nodules in the legumes 
have a oxygen limited environment. Without that, we're going to get these gray or white or brown or green um, nodules that don't fix nitrogen. So it's very important we have a lot of iron. Um, again, it's difficult to supply potentially through uh, a foliar application, but we want it in the root. So it's a bit more difficult. Um, soil applied is not the best way of doing it. It is quite difficult. So the next mineral we want to make sure we have a good amount of supply is potassium. Potassium is required for the translocation or it assists the translocation of carbohydrates. Remember, this process only works because the plant is giving the bacteria carbohydrates or food in exchange for nitrogen. So it's very intensive in that. We want to make sure trans transporting our sugars from the top of the plant into our roots. Potassium and boron, I'll put another one here, here, boron is required for that. So we want to make sure we have both of these. It's going to help move sugars into our roots. Next is uh, calcium. Calcium is required for that initial uh, triggering of the, or the communication uh, of the start of modulation. So we want to make sure we have a good amount of calcium supplied to the crop too. We can get that with our liming application beforehand. Now, good thing is our boron and our calcium are synergistic. They help each other um, as well. The next super important uh, mineral is sulfur. Sulfur is required in the development of uh, two, or two really important amino acids. That's uh, cysteine and methionine. Methionine is the very first amino acid in every single protein. It's, a, it's a, the amino acid that comes from the start codon. So without sulfur, you're not going to get any complete protein synthesis. And generally, with lack with the lack of sulfur, you're going to reduce the amount of uh, overall nodules in the plant. So next uh, is, we'll start, we're gonna run out of room, basically going through every mineral we have, is magnesium. Magnesium is important uh, at uh, more or less the start of nitrogen fixation. Now magnesium is uh, required for magnesium ATP hydrolysis, which is the first kind of step in uh, nitrogen fixation. You'll see it here in this chart at uh, basically the start. So not only is it just important for that process, it's also important for photosynthesis. It's, it's a cofactor in the chlorophyll molecule. You can see that here, it's the center, it captures the light. Very important. So not only does this help with increasing carbohydrate supply, it also is the start of uh, nitrogen fixation. Now the next minerals is a uh, combined effort with zinc and copper. So these two uh, minerals are required in what's called the copper zinc superoxide dismutase, which helps reduce free radicals um, in the nodules. Overall, it's just gonna help our nodules not get destroyed from the production of free radicals. And finally, a very important one that not many people consider is cobalt. Now cobalt is required in the production of this enzyme, I'm not even bother trying to pronounce it, uh, but that is required in the production of uh, leg hemoglobin. So if cobalt is limited, then the leg hemoglobin is not going to be produced effectively, uh, which means the uh, nodules are, aren't going to be in a low oxygen environment, which means they're not going to fix nitrogen um, and this whole system stuff. So that's very important uh, we, uh, to have it. And a lot of our soils are deficient in cobalt. The other thing that cobalt helps with is govern the size of the rhizobium bacteria. A bigger bacteria is going to produce more nitrogen or fix more nitrogen, so that's quite important. So there you have it, they're all the minerals. The ones I would be focusing on is our malignum because we don't tend to uh, apply that much. Cobalt is another one, uh, phosphorus, and I'll also make sure the structure and pH of our uh, soil is really good. So they're the main ones I would be uh, considering, as well as the other ones, but typically all right in the soil. Again, make sure to check out uh, these minerals on your soil test. You can get a free soil test analysis done on our website. Um, that's, a, that's a new available thing. Otherwise, if you're a farmer in Australia looking at using nutrition and soil health and all of that to maximize your production, as you can see, very important for legumes, then you can reach out to us at AgriSol. Uh, we specialize in regenerative agriculture consulting, specializing in nutrition management and microbes. You can get started with a free consultation. We'll go through over half an hour, five limiting factors on your farm and how we can overcome that using a regenerative framework. Awesome. Thanks again for watching. My name's Teal. Cheers.